CAT is the community of tech professionals with goal to inspire and empower each other to take climate action. This is season two of our climate action tech salons. So without further ado, I want to pass over to Tom. So Tom, over, over to you. Okay. So, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that everybody here knows <laughs> that the sort of the general concept that internet emissions are huge. Um, there's a bit of debate at the moment around exactly how huge they are, but generally as a ballpark, they're sort of roughly equivalent to a country like Germany or the global aviation sector. So, you know, whether it's two percent, three percent, or four percent of global carbon emissions, it's like it's a big number and and it's something that that needs to be tackled if we're going to kind of move towards a, a sustainable society. So, and then these emissions are all from electricity, essentially. Um, some of it is from generators, but ultimately it's all, it's all electricity. It's not like the aviation sector where like you have to burn fuel to make it work. Um, it's about how do you get the electricity from data centers, for transmission networks, for end user devices, like they're all burning electricity all the time. And fundamentally, digital sustainability is about looking at like, how do we reduce this energy use? How do we reduce the carbon emissions from the electricity itself? Um, as well as the bigger picture, which I hope we're gonna talk about today, the bigger picture around like, what is the influence that digital has in terms of society's shift to more sustainable ways of working and living? Um, and, and what is our influence there beyond just purely like making things energy efficient and low carbon? So one of the questions I wanted to kind of seed in the group perhaps for discussion is like this question of like, is it our problem to solve? There's a lot of kind of debate in the industry is now like digital sustainability is becoming a topic, it's getting picked up by the mass media and there's lots of kind of articles and news features now coming out about like, what do we do as consumers to reduce our digital impact? Do we watch less Netflix or, um, you know, send less emails and these sorts of things? And, you know, maybe that's a part of the solution. Um, but equally, is that throwing attention away from those of us who actually work in digital, who create digital products and services? Um, and, and where does the bulk of this responsibility lie? Like, is it for us as an industry to solve the sustainability problem? Is it for government to like regulate this and force us to do stuff? Or is it for end users to select their services carefully and use less data and, and so on? And, and I think the thing that I would really throw in as a, as a kind of a frame here from my perspective, and this is, this is an opinion, is that this is something that's happened to nearly every industry that's faced kind of environmental scrutiny, starting back in the 50s with this, the image here of um, the litter bug, which was basically an invention of Coca-Cola and various drinks and disposable packaging manufacturers back in the 50s when they first invented disposable drinks packaging. And then suddenly society had all of this litter that didn't exist before, because before that everything was basically made of things that were either reusable, like glass, or they were um, biodegradable, just paper packaging. And suddenly there was all this like plastic litter in society. And people started saying, hang on a minute, like what's this? There's all these Coca-Cola bottles around. We're not happy about this. It's ruining our towns. And and so the industry got together and thought, I know what we'll do. We'll, <laughs> we'll blame the customers, <laughs> but we'll frame it as if we're doing the right thing. So they created a nonprofit called Keep America Beautiful. Um, and this nonprofit basically was a lobbying group funded by industry to make consumers feel this is their problem to solve, to shift all the attention away from the manufacturers that were trying to flog them all with this disposable stuff. And so, and that's been used by like loads of industries since then, that kind of that concept of just shift the attention onto the end consumer. And, and, and I can see it happening now in digital as, as this issue is getting attention. And suddenly it's like, oh, you know, you should watch less Netflix and so on. And, and you know, I'm, maybe that's part of the solution, but I think we should be careful there. So, so that's the first question I'm going to just kind of see as some context around 
digital sustainability and what's our place within that. So let's assume that we do have some responsibility in this. Where can we, within our work in digital, make an impact? So there's a few places that we can make an impact and they're not all kind of technical areas. And the first one is, is project purpose. And this is probably the most controversial one. Um, there's a lot of debate around whether people should have kind of be selective about the type of work that they do. What are the projects that they work on promoting? Who's behind them? What is their impact in society? And also whether people have the ability, you know, like, are you in a position where you actually can be selective? Not everybody has that privilege. Um, but it's something really interesting to think about. And especially if you are in a position to have some choice, whether that's because you work in a business where you have some say, or because you, um, you know, maybe you're a freelancer and you have a bit of choice and you have enough work coming in that you can be a bit selective. It's not just about the technical efficiency, it's about what the bigger impact is. So a couple of examples here, Donation on the left, it's like a digital platform that kind of is for employee engagement to get people to try to make sustainable lifestyle choices. So that's a digital product where actually the, the impact in society of that digital product far outweighs the, the environmental impact of the digital product itself, because actually it's driving kind of positive behavior change. On the right, we've got Fox News's climate change uh, category, where, you know, there's loads of news about climate change, but most of it's kind of, you know, not very supportive of <laughs> positive change, shall we say. And somebody's got to build this website. Somebody's got to design this website. And, and, and that's not just individuals, it's also organizations, you know, there's, there's there's probably, there's probably an agency that, that works on this, maybe multiple marketing agencies. And, you know, what is the role there in actually having a discussion around, you know, are we, are we helping facilitate misinformation and, and, and the wrong types of messages that are going to lead society in the wrong direction? It's a very controversial debate, but it's a really interesting one to have. And earlier today, my team had a presentation from um, Tom Tapper, who is um, co-founder of a creative agency in London called Nice Serious, and they have a like a, an actual tool called the Moral Compass, and um, you can you can you can find it I think somewhere on their website, and it's open for other people to use. But it's for it's for digital teams or creative teams essentially to basically have a kind of democratic way of judging a project, and 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 getting a kind of an anonymous, like we can anonymously feed into the team so that they're not being judged by their managers or by their colleagues and, and say like, do they feel like this is aligned with the values of the organization and values of themselves and, and get a sense of whether this, the projects they're working on are having an impact on society that is the type of impact that they wanna be having. So I think this is, a, this is a place where in digital, we can actually affect sustainability in, in a very big way it's not specifically about the technical side of what we're doing. And I think this is probably an area that's not looked at enough, um, even though it is somewhat controversial in, in many ways. Um, sorry about this really crap slide. Um, but <laughs> you, you'll tell on some of these slides, I was short of time. But, <laughs> but um, the aeroplane is symbolic. <laughs> so, we can also look at the operations of what we're doing. It's not just, again, it's not just designing and building like digital products and services. It's also like, how are we physically working and doing that on a day-to-day -day basis? And, you know, are we, are we going to like fly to Milan to meet a client from London um, for a web design project? Is, does that make sense? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Or are we going to be, you know, are we going to be going to conferences on by airplane or, whatever it is, but also, you know, looking at our travel and our office use and where's the energy coming from and all these sorts of things. And actually, we, at the end of the day, like a big part of our impact is that day-to-day -day operations. And we're just like any professionals or businesses, like that's the place where we can take leadership as an industry that has people who are forward thinking. I think this is something where we can all kind of try to um, demonstrate best practice. 
Um, and then there are other things that are kind of more traditional that you might think about and which I think are going to be talked about a lot more in the next few talks in this series. But design is an area where we have a big impact. And I think the design actually feeds into that purpose part um, as well as the technical side. So, you know, design is really about communication and how we how are we communicating a message effectively and doing that um, in a way that champions good causes and makes them more successful. Um, but also does it in a way that kind of makes the developer's job easier. So designing things so that they're inherently efficient from the beginning, rather than kind of just designing something because it looks nice and it communicates a message well, but then leave the kind of technical efficiency to the developers. And, and what we find in our team is that actually having a really, having a really tight communication loop between designers and developers is what kind of leads to the best outcomes rather than this kind of traditional wall that you often have where it's like designers design something and then they throw it over the wall and the developers pick it up and go, eh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I wish you'd asked me about this <laughs> before, before you threw it over the wall. So, um, so I think like, design is is fundamentally about communication and that's communication both in terms of like what you're presenting to the end user but also communication within the within the team that you're working to create like digital products and services and there's cool things you can do in design that just make things inherently more efficient and um these will be talked about i'm sure in future talks but you know just what a nice little example here on the green party website is that they don't have like a full screen background image or autoplay video or something they have a like quite a small image but then they've used shapes and color and typography to actually create visual interest and emotional connection and, and make the message stand out um, in a way that actually can be achieved with very small, small file sizes um, and as far as i'm aware within the uk the green party does have the most efficient website of all the political parties which Maybe a coincidence, but <laughs> but also <laughs> might not be. So who knows? Um, then of course there's development, um, and again there's going to be a talk about the kind of the more technical side of engine, like software engineering and efficiency and and all of the layers. And one of the things that we really find in our team is that a lot of this is about like, attention to detail and. And, and, and spending time to find ways of doing things with more, you know, more efficient streamlined code and optimizing that and, and, and just looking at like where are the problems coming from? Because once you identify them, you can often find solutions to them. But it does take, it does take time and there's a trade-off between like how much time do you realistically have within a project? You don't always have as much time as you wish you did. Um, but then equally learning from things that you did on previous projects so that you can actually make, bring those kind of um, improvements into future projects. Um, this is just a tool that I thought was an interesting screenshot was the Safari energy impact tool. So within Safari DevTools, there's this little energy impact graph in the middle, which measure, measures CPU energy. And it's, it's, thing, it's tools like this, which I think are really useful from a development point of view to, to actually test what is the efficiency of the stuff that you're building? And it, it might not be obvious, you know, you could have sort of, you know, five different um, little kind of animation effects when you interact with something on a page, but actually the CPU impact of those five effects might be, you know, they might vary wildly, but actually the, the kind of the user experience difference between the five might be kind of trivial. So it's good to just actually just test things and experiment and and find the things that that find that sweet spot between delivering the end result and delivering great user experience, but doing it in a really efficient way. And this kind of you know covers all areas of you know server-side code and front end. So I'm not going to go into detail of development, as I said. Um, the next thing is hosting. So 
hosting is another area where we can really have some impact. And this is kind of one of the low hanging fruits, I think, because it, in a way it doesn't really affect anything that in terms of user experience, um, design, technology, regardless of what you've done until you get to the point of sticking on a server somewhere, you can, you can make better choices in hosting. So part of that is like looking for hosts that have a commitment to using renewable energy. That's a whole kind of, you know, big topic that we could open up Pandora's box and get into in discussion if we want to. But I think it's fundamentally a good starting point to look for hosts that are making a commitment to doing that and using their, using their power as like huge electricity consumers to actually help shift the grid in whatever country they're in towards using more renewable energy. Um, but equally, regardless of that, like the, the uh, electricity map, which is on the screen here from tomorrow, which is a tool you can, you can use online, is really interesting. So regardless of whether the hosting provider is got a commitment to using renewable energy, there's a sort of geographical question. But let's say that our audience for our website is sort of Central Europe. Actually, it's not necessarily within a specific country. The question is, you know, should we host it in France, Germany, Belgium, Austria? Um, and you might have multiple options to choose from. And actually, the electricity amount is really cool because you can really quickly get a sense of where is the most efficient place to to host it in terms of like low carbon, low carbon energy. Um, you know, maybe we should be hosting our websites in in Denmark and serving them to Germany instead of hosting them in Germany. That's, again, it's, it's a debate, but it's really interesting to look at and see, see where the energy is really coming from in the geographies that are relevant to you. Um, and then equally, you know, within hosting, there's like whole different worlds of technology layers. So you know, sort of CDNs to bring content closer to the users and reduce transmission distance, but there's also, Technologies like caching layers, which can really massively reduce um, the actual server load of CMSs like WordPress and Drupal and, and minimize the energy consumption on the server. And then there's static technologies that can actually be done at a server level. So you can convert, you can get hosting services that will convert a WordPress site into a static HTML CSS website, for example, and make it super efficient. So there's lots of interesting things that are happening in the hosting space that are like, a, they might take some time to research, but they're, they're kind of an easy win in the sense that there's not that much emotional connection in most projects with like where the hosting is, like your manager or your client is, is probably quite invested in like what the homepage looks like or, you know, um, or what, or what CMS they want to use, they might have like a really strong opinion about it because it's the one that they used for the last five years or whatever it is. But actually the hosting can be something where they're quite agnostic. They're sort of, well, just tell me what works. And as long as it's affordable, we're fine with that. So you can have a lot of influence within the hosting arena. Um, and speaking of influence, that's sort of my, my sixth point of like where we can have impact within digital sustainability is in actually like realizing that we all have power as individuals to, to influence the industry. And, and we might feel like individually, we might feel like a drop in the ocean, but actually each individual person that's sort of championing sustainability does have a ripple effect and it might not always be visible from your own kind of perspective, you might feel like you're not getting anywhere, but actually it all rubs off and the more people that are doing it, the more the industry as a whole kind of develops a culture of believing that sustainability is something important and that should be talked about and that um, and it should be and it should be prioritized. Um, and I've just got a screenshot of the Let's Green the Web Together campaign, which Climate Action Tech is, is going to be launching soon. Because I think that's a, a really, really good example of like, you know, people coming together to actually move the industry in the right direction. Um, but it also starts with, you know, like just gentle conversations with your colleagues, with your managers, with clients, and 
getting it on their radar and making them feel like this is something that they should actually they should actually care about. Which brings me on to the next thing, which is how do we talk about it? <laughs> um, and and this is quite interesting because I, like we found like we started talking about sort of sustainable web design several years ago and. And initially we were like really passionate about it and we were like telling all our clients, well, oh, you've got to like prioritize this in your project. And we got a lot of blank looks and people kind of be like, yeah, okay. I'm not sure that what you're talking about is even real. And, <laughs> and if it is real, well, okay. Yeah. It sounds nice. Yeah. I can get on board with it, but I'm much more interested in like the things that are actually in my brief. Um, and and sustainability wasn't then and, and to a large extent still isn't now although i have seen this changing quite rapidly in the past 12 months and um and the things that we found have really helped like the first thing is being positive so we found that like being like firstly not not like shaming people for bad performance um nobody wants to be told like oh you know you're doing a really bad job you're really you've got really polluting web services you're using the wrong hosting and all the rest of it they, they wanted to be framed in a positive way that actually like we're gonna let's do something good together and feel like that's something that they can feel good about themselves that they're getting on the right track rather than kind of being bogged down in like stigma of like what they did in the past when actually they probably didn't have polluting services on purpose it just wasn't something they knew about um, but then to actually get them interested and do that in a way that really works you've really got to listen to them and 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 make it more of a conversation where you're trying to understand what is their perspective where are they coming from like what is their background in this like have they given it thought before and um, like do they have concerns because that's a really you know that's a really key thing about like, okay, there might be loads of benefits and you're excited about the benefits, but like they might have concerns and they might be legitimate concerns. So listening and, and making sure that they feel heard and taking them on a journey with you, I think is really important. And then from there, focusing on the benefits that, that they care about and, and, and sort of tweaking the conversation and the language to whoever you're talking to seems to seems to be very effective. So some people might be like, once they get it, they might be like, okay, yeah, sustainability is something that we care about. And we, did, we didn't know there was a digital aspect to it. Now we know we want to like put this high on our priority list and that's great. But there's lots of other cases where they're like, no, 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 okay. We care about sustainability and great that you've, we now know about it. We want to do something, but actually it's like there's 10 priorities and it's number 10 or, you know, number one is conversion rates and number two is accessibility or whatever it might be. And, you know, those things are completely legitimate. And I think what's really helpful is to actually talk to them in the language of the things that they care about and make them realize that sustainability is not, it's generally not a trade-off, but like you generally are not sacrificing any of these other things in order to make them more sustainable. In many cases, you're actually doing things that are going to improve conversion rates and improve SEO and improve accessibility and improve user experience. And, uh, and in, a, in a worst case scenario, you're generally not making those things any worse, even if you're not making them any better. So like shifting the conversation to the things that they care about, even if that means that actually you're not talking about sustainability at all, and you're just kind of like <laughs> slipping it in by stealth and, um, just say, we're going to do this because it's going to improve your conversion rates. And actually, you know that you're also making it more sustainable. That's like, that's, that's great. At the end of the day, the end result is what matters. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily always matter if everybody does it, you know, for, for the purpose of sustainability. Um, keeping it simple, I think is important. I think it's easy to, I mean, I certainly found this it, I sometimes get too lost in the weeds and the detail and the the minutiae and nuances of <laughs> of things. And I realize and I and I realize when people's eyes glaze over that and, and this may well be happening now to all the people with their 
camera switched off. <laughs> so, so, I, sometimes I realize that, you know what, like, I'm worrying about a level of detail that, that they just don't care about. They, they, they're, they're just being introduced to the topic and, and you need to kind of try to really understand like what, what point are they at in this journey of learning about digital sustainability and, and keep the conversation simple. And if they want to go into more detail and they're ready for it and you're ready for it, that's great. Um, but start simple and move from there. Cause I think if you make it too complex to start with, it's easy to, to lose people before you've really made any progress. Um, and then my last point really just on this is, is encouraging competition. One of the things we found with our clients is that sometimes they seem to not be that motivated until they realize that one of their competitors has already like taken really good steps forward <laughs> in like digital sustainability or something that's kind of a, a relation to it, like, you know, web performance, for example. And, and once they realize that, um, suddenly they're like, even, even if it's not sort of commercially driven in terms of actual like mon monetary returns, often there's an element of competition. It's like, yeah, but we've got to be better than our competitors. So, so okay, we, we, want to, we want to make our pages load faster than theirs and we want to make our amount of data that we transfer smaller than theirs. And we want to make sure if they've got green hosting, we want green hosting. And, you know, they want to tell a better story and, and that's great. You know, tap into whatever, whatever motivations people have in their head and often competition is one of them. Um, tap into it and use it as a tool to kind of power the change to more, more sustainable solutions. So that's sort of my, that is my introduction. Um, whether it covered the things that you were looking for or not, I have no idea. Um, but that's sort of my introduction to like things to think about and the places we can already have impact in digital sustainability. Um, and just a few resources that I'd suggest looking at before I, before I stop talking. Um, sustainablewebdesign.org um, was relaunched last week and, and has a whole bunch of kind of strategies that you can follow within projects. And this is, this is very much evolving. So have a look, see what you can learn, but also like contribute back and suggest, suggest strategies or um, resources that can be linked to that people can learn from, from your own experiences and your own knowledge. And hopefully this will evolve over time to be a really, really useful resource. And it, it very much kind of takes a triple bottom line approach to sustainability. So it's looking at how we can integrate within our projects um, things that not only are better for the planet, but they're also better for society and, and also better for, better for, for business and, and covering kind of all of these things I've just been talking about. So operations, the technical like design, development, hosting, um, the purpose behind projects. So hopefully that's a useful resource and hopefully something that the CAT community can uh, also suggest improvements to over time. Uh, Sustainable Web Manifesto, um, go have a read, the six kind of points of the manifesto that um, I think it were just like really nice fundamental principles to keep in mind for any digital project. And whether you sign the manifesto or not, I think it's good food for thought. So go over there and have a look. Um, two tools that are kind of quantifying um, tools. So websitecarbon.com, which my team developed a few years ago, um, stick in a web page URL and get a a carbon and energy value for like how much is consumed by that. And that's a good way of kind of benchmarking sites. And then EcoGrader, which takes a bit more of a holistic view of a web page and looks at some of the kind of other aspects beyond just the sort of measurable, um, uh, so like data transfer and, and energy and carbon values um, is, is also worth ch checking out. And I have a feeling they might be updating this sometime in the near future, but I don't want to, I don't want to, commit them to that <laughs> so but nevertheless um good good things to have a look at and then lastly my plaking plug for my new book 
um, sustainable web design, which is going to launch a week today. So next Tuesday, you can pre-order it already from a book apart, but it will be officially available from next Tuesday, which I'm super excited about.